This video is brought to you by my awesome patrons and YouTube members. Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and welcome back to episode 11 of the Chronicles of Rook. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little self-promotion. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, I did a full co-op Let's Play series to begin my channel over two and a half years ago. To conclude that series though, I did what I consider my first narrative video, which was a summary of my experience highlighting the best parts of the full 22 episode series and condensed it down to one video. Even though it's from my very first series, I feel like it's held up really well and I would love it if you'd check out my summary video. Do we have to do anything quickly? Do we have to do anything quickly? You just have to get off. Okay, no. Get off! No, I can't. It's a long one since it covers the entire playthrough, but I promise it's a good one. Check it out from the card in the top right corner of the screen. Thanks, guys. Now, back to the video. Last episode, Rook took down a Holy Nation attack force with the help of the Shek army and traveling merchants. After their force was defeated, Rook took matters into his own hands as he attacked Okran's fist at night. He eventually got overwhelmed and tried to escape, but the Holy Nation forces continued to pursue him. Would Rook be able to make it out in one piece? Rook's left leg was wounded to the point where he couldn't outrun the paladins. He heard a man shouting at him from behind as he slowly closed the gap between them. It was only one man, so it seemed like a good opportunity to take him out quickly and continue his escape. He turned, blocked the paladin's swing, and hit him with a strong counterattack. Rook was overwhelming his enemy with powerful blows. He saw another wounded paladin in the corner of his eye approaching the combat too. He could handle these two men easily. Rook wasn't concerned anymore. The next attack was so strong that it severed the paladin's arm. He was in a state of shock until Rook's falling son hit him again and he crumbled to the ground. The other paladin cursed at him and raised his guard. Rook was having trouble getting past his defensive stance to take him out. This is when Rook noticed more reinforcements were heading his way. He wasn't sure if he could take them all on in his current physical state and he couldn't let them capture him. He made the decision to get out of there. As soon as he turned to run, the paladin struck his left leg and wounded Rook to the point where he could barely even walk. He turned, knowing he had to fight them now. There was no way he could outrun them. Rook was beginning to worry a little as they were whittling him down slowly, but he managed to take out another paladin. Another one recovered and continued fighting Rook. They were almost as banged up as Rook and he could see the worry in their faces, just like his. The men alternated fighting with Rook and giving first aid to their wounded men. As the combat continued, Rook was hopeful that he'd be able to hold his ground and take out the remaining Holy Nation guard. That's when he saw another full group of reinforcements coming to support the other men. Rook knew his limits. It was foolish, but he had to try and escape. He stepped back and started to leave. Right as the paladin he was locking blades with began to pursue Rook, the other men called out for him to stand his ground and help with the wounded. The paladin spit in Rook's direction and gave him a devious smile while the other men whispered to the paladin. Rook couldn't hear what they were saying, and at this point, he didn't really care. As he slowly got some distance between the men, he heard the paladin yell out saying he'll pay for what he's done. And just like that, the men left Rook to escape. He wasn't sure why they did that, but he had to find some place safe to rest up. He was finally in the clear and patched up his wounds. He was in no state to explore Holy Nation territory, so he decided to travel back to World's End again and rest up. He made it there safely and immediately found the bar with some available beds on the rooftop. He paid for the rent one laid down. He was quite tired after that whole ordeal. Rook slept the entire day and felt much better as he got up late that evening. Okrin's fist was quite the little fortress, but he wasn't sure what Narco's trap could be. He was going to investigate it next. He ran out of World's End and thanked the barkeep on his way out. It was time to explore hostile territory once again. While traveling to Narco's trap, he discovered an outpost called Okrin's Shield nearby. It was closer to him than his original destination, so he decided he would make a quick detour and see what this place was first. He arrived soon after and saw it was a large base split into two halves. There were lots of men patrolling the area too. Rook felt like this was too big of a risk to explore, and if he got caught, he wasn't certain he would make it out safely. For now, he was just gathering intel on the Holy Nation's forces. He planned to sneak around the base and continue his way south and check out Narco's trap. Using darkness as his cover before the sun rose at dawn, he snuck past Okran's shield without any issue. As he approached Narco's trap, he saw what looked like an ancient lab surrounded by a wall and a small outpost built right beside it. How peculiar, Rook thought to himself. What could they be hiding in there? There were lots of soldiers patrolling the area, but Rook was confident in his ability to sneak by unsuspecting guards. He ran past the men and began working the locked gate. He wanted to see what was inside. The lock came undone on his first try and he opened up the gate slowly to avoid drawing any unwanted attention towards him. As soon as it was opened, he ran through and up the ramp to the building. Another locked gate. Whatever was in here, the Holy Nation wasn't hiding it, they were securing it. It was a basic lock, nothing Rook couldn't handle, so he worked it open and snuck inside. The very first thing he ran into was a security spider patrolling the area. Rook wasn't a fan of them ever since his last encounter and fortunately snuck past it. 
There were a lot of locked crates and containers here. The Holy Nation seemed to fear this old technology, but Rook was quite a fan of whatever treasures he could get his hands on. He found an ancient science book which they could use to research better tech back at New Raleigh. He continued looting the room while keeping an eye out for any patrolling security spiders. The ancient safe opened and Rook's eyes widened at the contents inside. Eleven ancient science books and two AI cores. He just hit the jackpot. He stuffed all the research items into his bag and continued looting the other chests. He just had to be careful and not get caught. He patiently waited for the patrolling spider to leave and he continued searching this tower. His bags were completely full of research equipment at this point and since he couldn't care anymore, he thought it was best for him to finally return home. He plotted New Raleigh as his destination on the map and began navigating out of the ancient tower. It was always a good feeling to Rook when he successfully escaped unnoticed. Now, of course as he was basking in the satisfaction of his findings, he ran straight into a patrolling Holy Nation guard that spotted him. He screamed out to the other soldiers and never enclosed in on him. Rook began to run away from their outpost as he felt a sudden impact in his left arm. A harpoon turret hit him and did significant damage. He hugged the wall to make sure they couldn't target him and he ran as fast as he could away from there. Rook was significantly faster than those men, he continued to increase his distance between the enemy. He could hear them cursing Rook behind him. They sure were persistent, but the men eventually gave up their chase and returned back to their post. Rook continued moving south, right into an incoming dust storm. If anyone was still tracking him, they'd most certainly lose him now. Rook caused quite a lot of trouble for the Holy Nation recently. Maybe they'd think twice about sending an attack force to New Raleigh again. Towards the end of the day, Rook finally returned home. Nothing felt more comforting than running through the gates in New Raleigh and seeing his friends that he'd rescued and recruited. It was always a pleasant feeling. He had to take care of a few small errands now that he was back. First of all, he found enough circuit boards at Narco's Trap to finish the construction of their own skeleton repair bed. This was a great addition to their base. He also took all of his science books and AI cores that he found and placed it into their research bench. Rook's findings would allow them to kickstart more advanced research technology. He knew that his men had to become stronger if they were ever going to take on the Holy Nation. Rook wouldn't win this war off his skills alone. His current method of training his men was taking them on expeditions with him, but it was inefficient and slow. Rook thought of an idea on how he could help them build up their skills much faster. He told Mac that they were going on a trip together. Mac really enjoyed traveling outside the safety of New Raleigh with Rook, and ever since Rook got the blueprints to make heavy bolts, he had virtually unlimited ammunition too. He was their best shot with the crossbow after all. What about a count of <laughs> yeah, boy. The east gate slowly opened as a dust bandit's limp corpse rolled down the ramp from the wall. Just the leftovers of some local riffraff trying to cause some trouble. The gate shut behind them and Rook smiled at Mac and told him how they were going back to the Ashlands for something important, but he needed Mac's help for it. His skill with the crossbow would definitely come in handy. Before they journeyed all the way to the Ashlands, Rook wanted to stop by the scrap house shop in the Black Desert City first to see what inventory they had. They set it as their destination and began sharing stories while they traveled. They arrived with no issue and Mac approached the vendor to browse his wares. Their finest weapons were still too expensive to purchase, but he did find some blueprints for black and chain shirts. That would be a nice protective shirt to wear underneath the crafted crab armor. He also found a recipe for a dark leather shirt in case a chain shirt was too heavy. It wasn't much, but Ryan had more options for fully outfitting the men. They considered it a successful trip and continued towards Spring, which was just outside of the Ashlands. As they made their way southeast, they discovered an old control tower. Well, it looked interesting and it could have some nice treasure in it, so Mac volunteered to investigate. Mac wasn't exactly the stealthy type though, and as soon as he entered, he was greeted by a few hostile skeleton fighters. Though, from the looks of it, there was definitely some potential treasure on the other floors of this tower. Before he even ran into the tower, Rook told Mac to continue his trip towards Spring if he encountered anything bad, so he turned and made sure to get out of there before getting hurt. Rook was much stealthier and he approached the tower, prepared to hide in the shadows as he pilfered whatever goods he could get his hands on. He successfully made it in without drawing any attention to himself. He continued to evade the skeletons and made his way to the top floor where there were locked chests. Most locks he encountered were simple to pick open. He quietly searched through the chest and found some ancient science books and a few maps that might have new locations that he could mark off on his own map. He stuffed them into his pockets as quietly as he could and he took a moment to examine the locations on these maps. Eh, nothing too interesting. At least not when you're in the middle of infiltrating a hostile tower. He put the maps away and began working open the next lock. Inside this chest was a masterwork industrial lifter arm. That might come in handy in the future so he put it in his bag. Last but certainly not least was an ancient safe. Inside he found another masterwork robotic limb and some AI cores. Another good find. He stuffed everything he could into his bag and while he was beginning to make his sneaky exit, he noticed a skeleton locked up in the nearby cages. Out of curiosity he went over to it. 
His name was Agnew. Agnew looked at Rook and roared. Rook tried to shush Agnew, but he just continued roaring and shaking around in the cage. It seemed like he couldn't properly communicate with Rook. He sensed that Agnew needed help. He was locked up in here after all. Unfortunately, all the ruckus that Agnew made drew the attention of everyone in the tower. Rook had to get out of there for now. As he left the tower, he heard one of the skeletons speaking. Then he noticed that skeleton had a hefty bounty if it were captured and brought into the Holy Nation cities. Rook had an idea that would only be a slight detour of their original plans and Mac was summoned to come back to the tower where Rook was hiding. Mac reluctantly followed Rook's orders to cause a distraction and lure the skeletons out of the base, so he said a silent prayer to himself while running into the top floor of the tower. It looked like they were all aware of his presence, so he maneuvered through the angry robots as he began to make his exit. Somehow, he miraculously made it out with no harm and a huge line of skeletons were chasing him out of the area. While everyone was distracted and confused, Rook snuck back into the tower and immediately began working to free Agnew. He knew there were others close by and he worked as quickly as he could until he heard the lock snap and Agnew's cage opened up. Of course he roared with pleasure as he stepped out of the cage, which got the attention of everyone again. Rook started to escape and he yelled out to Agnew to hide and spring for the time being and he would meet them there later. Just like that, Agnew was part of Rook's crew. Rook turned to fight the skeletons for a moment to buy Agnew time to escape. Once he was in the clear, they both took off. While Agnew couldn't speak, Rook could sense joy coming from him as they ran through the last remaining skeletons and exited the tower. Who knows how long they had him locked up there. Once they were in the clear, Rook stopped Agnew and fixed up the damage he received while they escaped. Once he was fully repaired, Rook told him to meet Mac in spring and he would join them soon. He had one last task he had to take care of first. He looked at his map and began sneaking back to the tower to collect his bounty. He arrived and it was late at night. That would work to his advantage. It was quite chaotic there. They weren't used to humans sneaking in and out of their tower causing all kinds of mischief like this. Rook found his target and before it noticed him, Rook's fist hit it hard enough in the head to shut it down temporarily. As he was about to pick his bounty up, he noticed it had a Meitu Grade Hold Saber. That was an unexpected bonus treasure for them. He disarmed the skeleton and scooped up its limp body from the ground. Checking his map, Brink was the closest United City's town nearby, so he began making his way east. As he began running, the skeletons noticed him again and were baffled by Rook and his audacity to sneak in again and cause more problems. Rook slid past any opponent that got too close and exited down the ramp. Another successful bounty was about to be collected. He entered Brink by morning and all he was looking for was their police station. He wanted to be quick so he could meet back up with Mac and Agnew at spring. Rook located the station and brought his prize inside. He found the police chief and spoke with him. The chief took the skeleton from him and handed him a prize of 20,000 cats. Rook smiled as he examined his bag of money and put it into his pocket. It was time to get back to his original mission. Back in New Raleigh, Ryan was working hard at honing his skills as an armor smith. He completed another full set of crab armor too and decided it was time for him to suit up. There was a sense of great accomplishment as he donned the armor that he crafted with his own hands. It fueled Ryan's motivation to continue mastering his work. Rook arrived at spring with no issues and met with Mac and Agnew. Agnew was told to wait at the bar until they returned. He roared and nodded his head, showing Rook that he understood his request. For the first time, Rook was taking Mac with him into the Ashlands. Mac still didn't fully understand what they were going to be doing, so Rook finally shared his plans in full. Now that they were able to build their own skeleton repair bed, they would be able to capture a strong skeleton fighter and keep it as a, a guest that they'd be able to spar with, like Rook initially did with a starving bandit long ago. The skeleton repair bed would be able to keep a robotic opponent in a good fighting condition almost constantly since it would be repaired very quickly. Rook was weary to do this alone though and Mac's ranged expertise would be able to help take their chosen target down more easily than Rook could do in solo combat. Unfortunately, Cat Lom was too strong for them to try and bother with. So they'd try and find another suitable skeleton to bring back home. Maybe they'd find some more valuable loot while they were there too. While they continued traveling south, they discovered a few outposts that Rook suspected belonged to the horrifying skin bandits, but then they discovered a particularly creepy outpost that was nearby. Rook had to investigate it, of course. He had Mac hide below the mountainside while Rook crept in to see what exactly this creepy outpost was. As he snuck down into the crater, he saw a collection of skin houses. This must be the center of the skin bandits' operations. The place was crawling with them too. They patrolled the area with their loose flesh suits. It was a thing of nightmares. Further east, beyond the skin house HQ, was a tower by the coast of the sea. It was dark out and Rook was confident he could pass through the skin bandits unnoticed. He moved as quickly as he could without drawing any attention to himself. One day, he thought, he's gonna pay a real visit to these skin bandits. He made it to the other side of the crater quickly enough and continued down towards the coast. He found a lone tower facing out to the sea. 
He crept up to the door and worked the lock open with ease. He quietly slid the door open and made his way inside. The tower seemed empty, but upon further inspection, there were watchbots stationed on turrets at the top of the tower. Good thing he was sneaking to the tower. Brooke wasn't here looking for a fight, though. He found a locked safe on one of the floors and focused all of his attention on it. This lock was more complicated than most, which made him excited for what might be inside. After he worked the lock open, the door slowly creaked and revealed its contents. There was a Masterworks Eagle Cross that looked like a great weapon. Sadly, Rook realized that this thing wasn't going to fit into his bag. He frowned as he put it back into the safe. However, he was able to take the Old World Bow MK2. Better than nothing, Rook thought as he closed up the safe as quietly as he could. Nothing else was of value, so Rook went to meet back up with Mac. He saw a warning that a Retribution of God was moving towards New Raleigh. Rook wasn't entirely sure what that was, but he figured their walls would keep any unwanted guests out. He found Mac, who was very relieved to see Rook again, and they marked an unexplored Ashlands dome as their first destination. It was time that Rook returned to the Ashlands once again. Rook could see the look of awe on Mac's face, but he could also sense his fear. There was another Ashlands dome closer to their location, so they decided to check it out first. They could see remnants of a structure over the top of the hill they were about to cross. Inside of those ruins, there was another one of those domes. Rook asked Mac to wait outside while he ventured in. Mac laughed and said he had absolutely no problem with Rook's order. Rook was being stealthy and went inside. This dome seemed to be fully operational. It was filled with skeletons. The bottom floor was too crowded with them. There was no way he'd be able to search for loot down there. Rook was so good at blending in that he was able to sneak right past skeletons as he ran up the stairway to check out the rest of the dome. Well, it worked until it didn't, and they attacked him as soon as they realized there was a human in their midst. He locked blades with two of them, but took significant damage from one of the skeletons. He tried taking them on, but heard reinforcements coming up from the lower floors. Rook decided it would be safer to just make a run for it and try to escape. He dodged past them and spiraled down the staircase with a whole group of angry skeletons chasing after him. Max saw what was going on from afar, and even though he wasn't skilled in the art of stealth like Rook, he still hunkered down and tried not to be seen. Rook was faster than the robotic army, and they stopped chasing after him once he gained enough distance between them. Of course, Rook wasn't going to just stop there. After they all returned to their dome, he snuck back in for plan B. Rook stealthily took down the closest skeleton by the entrance. As it fell to the ground, Rook unplugged the CPU unit from its head, and it killed the robot instantly. For some reason, these ancient skeletons could be defeated by simply pulling these out quickly, shutting down their entire systems. It might be tedious work, but Rook was going to whittle this dome down until no skeleton was left standing. As he knocked another one out, he pulled the plug on it too, but a nearby patrol noticed him. Before he could even react, they knocked him out this time. They just wanted to be left in peace. They carried Rook's unconscious body outside of the dome's entrance and dropped him off there. To its surprise, as soon as it laid Rook on the soft ground, he sprung back up and attacked. Rook held his own just fine against one of these things. His final swing dropped the skeleton and set it to reboot. As soon as it fell on the soft ashen ground, Rook pulled out the CPU, shutting it down permanently. He was about to sneak back in, but noticed that one of these skeletons was the head of agriculture. It was a very powerful fighter too. Rook knew this personally because that was a skeleton that did so much damage to him when he was initially caught in this dome earlier. This was the one. Rook and Mac had to capture the head of agriculture and bring him back to New Raleigh alive. Back home, preparations were being made for Rook and Mac's return. Rook shared his plans with Tao before they left, and it was his responsibility to have a training facility ready by the time they returned. The foundations of a station house were placed and the men began their work. It was built quickly enough and inside there was a lone cage placed by the corner wall. They also planned another skeleton repair bed beside the prison cell. This would make their training room optimal for keeping the robot in fighting condition. Back in the Ashlands, Rook was going to try and simply knock out his victim, even though the chances were low. He was caught before he even got close. The skeleton charged at Rook. It was faster and stronger than Rook. He couldn't even land a hit on this thing. Even worse, any blow that Rook failed to block inflicted heavy damage to him, and it was just a one-handed blade. Rook's attempts to take it out in upfront combat failed. He missed another attack and was knocked out cold from the contact. It scooped Rook up and walked him out of their dome. Little did they know that Mac was patiently waiting outside for this opportunity. As soon as it stepped foot into the open, it sensed something was wrong. A heavy bolt flew through the air and penetrated its leg. It dropped Rook and immediately charged at Mac. Fortunately, he was a good shot and slowed it down with the blow to its leg. Even so, it was still quick and was closing in on Mac. But Mac was faster and kept his distance from the skeleton, while shooting it at any chance he had. 
It continued to limp towards him, even though it suffered critical damage. A final shot from Mac's crossbow took it down. He wiped the sweat from his forehead and looted the skeleton. Mac understood why it did so much damage to Rook now. Its weapon was made too great, and even for such a small blade, it packed a big punch. He took the cleaver for himself and lifted the heavy robot over his shoulders. Their mission was successful. At least the first half of it was. Rook was still knocked out cold, so Mac ran over and tended to his wounds. They brought a camp bed to rest up in, and Rook needed to be well enough for traveling, so Mac laid the head of agriculture to the ground and picked Rook up. Rook was laid down to heal up, and Mac immediately went to pick up their prize before it could reboot. After a little bit of time, Rook was almost fully recovered. He gave Mac a pat on the back and told him this was exactly why he needed him to come with him on this mission. Rook was much stronger and could move faster while carrying the skeleton, so they traded and they repaired it so it wouldn't die during their journey back west. They were going to meet back up with Agnew in spring first and began their travels back. There was an unnerving silence as ash fell all around them. They were both happy to be leaving the Ashlands and returning home so quickly. Even while carrying the head of agriculture, they left the Ashlands and bypassed the Skim Bandits safely. They were just outside of spring. Agnew was summoned and they all began their travels west, marking Morn as a checkpoint. Agnew wasn't that far behind them, so Rook and Max started without him. The two men made it to Morn in no time. They were very fast on their feet when it came to traveling. They hurried through the entrance and when they got there, Rook turned to Mac and told him to wait here until Agnew arrived. He was going to go on ahead without them. Their top priority was to get the skeleton back to New Raleigh and secure it so they could really begin their training. Mac nodded and said he understood. He bid Rook farewell as he took off. Rook was determined to get there as soon as possible. He had a long night ahead of him. Agnew was a bit slower than the others, but he made it to Morn safely a few hours later. As soon as he turned into the city's gates, Mac greeted him and told him that they were ready to continue west to New Raleigh together. Agnew roared in approval and they began their somewhat slower travels back home. Outside of New Raleigh's walls was the retribution of God that the Holy Nation sent to them. This was a much larger attack force than their previous attempt. It looked like Rook's message was received, but the Holy Lord Phoenix wanted to send him an even bigger message. At least for now, the closed off gates deterred them from entering and wreaking havoc. Rook arrived later that afternoon and he snuck around the Holy Nation forces at the East Gate and entered through the North Gate instead. Rook came in as quickly as he could and took his new friend into the newly constructed training hall to keep him secure for the time being. He placed him into the cage and it looked back at Rook, silent and emotionless. Mac and Agnew ran into problems in the swamp. Swamp ninjas ambushed them and they were inflicting lots of damage to the two men. There were too many of them so they continued running, hoping they could escape in one piece. They made it out of the swamp, but the ninjas didn't let up and left Mac in a critical state. Agnew wouldn't be able to defend himself before making it to the safety of their city. Rook knew that he had to help them or they'd be toast. He told the men to hold tight and he would return shortly and left from the west gate to save Agnew and Mac. The Holy Nation army must have known Rook returned and waited for him to leave again before they took action. As Rook was heading to Agnew's safety, the Retribution of God destroyed their gate and began their assault on New Raleigh. This is why they let Rook escape from Okran's fist. They wanted him to be nearby when they attacked. They were definitely sending a message this time and Rook wasn't there to protect his men. How will they get out of this one? Stay tuned for the next episode to find out. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's some more awesome fan art for you to enjoy. Do you want to create some fan art? Join the Discord channel with the link in the description below and share it with us there to be featured in future episodes. I appreciate all of your contributions, regardless of your skill level. Thanks guys. If you want to keep up to date with this series and other narrative content I release, please subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member to support the channel even further. There are lots of great perks and this helps me out immensely. I also want to shout out my newest patrons, Yami and American Kaiser. Thank you both so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And a big, big thanks to all of my patrons who are helping support the channel so that I can eventually do this full time and create more series like this. I really appreciate it, guys. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.